Peace, family. Vicki Dill here for FN Diaspora News Channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to give us a big thumbs up and share the broadcast. And of course, be sure to download our new app for African Diaspora News Channel. I think you're going to love it. It will give you access with a high level of excellence uh, to some of the most important uh, content the world over. And that's news right here concerning the African diaspora. So we want you so much to uh, connect with that, download that. I think you're going to love it. Family, uh, one of the longest serving congresspersons, and uh, in particular, Black congresspersons, um, Representative Jim Clyburn, Representative James Clyburn, he is stepping down now from one of his House Democratic leadership posts. So everybody is tripping out and, uh, and he left the position vacant. But here's the thing. When interviewed about it, we found that he's leaving the post so that he can spend more time to help Jim Crow, uh, Joe Biden win. Now, you all, if you remember uh, that uh, James Clyburn was instrumental in reviving Joe Biden's failing presidential candidate. So he is the one that helped to convince not only his people, his state, but because he's in the South, it really, it really served as sort of a chain reaction to get other folks to support Joe Biden, even though he was losing at the time. So, you know, James Clyburn is really, you know, something else. He, he believes in restoring and maintaining um, white supremacy and its hegemonic uh, control and power. Well, this is the man that's spending more time to help Joe Biden with his campaign, helping to revive it, giving it his all. Yes. Well, I want to remind you just who James Clyburn is. Watch this clip. Good to see you. you want to know if you support reparations? I'm sorry? You want to know if you support reparations? I support reparations without in that name. Y'all need to learn what reparations is. Y'all keep talking about a word. What it means to repair. It's cash. You mean cash? Cash payments? For Hell all. no. You never get it. Why not? That's why we need your support. You got a lot of power. You will never get it. We have a lot of leverage. Let me ask you a question. You get our support. We have, we've been dedicated to you for a very long listen? time. Will you listen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. If you are mulatto and you are allowed to get an education and this person is not and not allowed to get an education, how will you measure which, which one to do what? I was allowed to get an education, but I'm but still That's not the point. Now. You're talking about the law. You're talking about the law. You're talking about my wife, whose grandfather was white, and therefore her mother could get us together, but her daddy was African. And how do you measure that? But you got, but Africans get educated now. Okay. You support well, Africans getting educated right now. We're living in Africa. You live in America. Okay. I know you, you, you got more sense than I got. I understand that. Like, okay, did you hear him tell a foundational black American when it comes down to reparations? He said his answer is, hell no, we're not getting it. Did you see and hear the aggression in his body and his voice and tone? This is what you all have to understand. The problem with some of us getting reparations is not just white folk in Congress or the president. Former President Obama, for example, was against reparations when he was asked about it during his presidential uh, debate. He gave a full-throated no. Then when he got in office, not only did he not use his bully pulpit to advocate it, regardless of which way of which way Congress would have gone, but he spent his time actually arguing against it, particularly in a, a piece that he did with the uh, Atlantic, when he actually said, when interviewed about reparations, he acknowledged the injustice that our people experience is directly related to uh, chattel slavery, black codes, convict leasing, Jim Crow. Uh, in other words, he acknowledged multiple forms of discrimination that has everything to do with our position here in the United States, which means it's man-made, it's created, it's engineered. But then he had the nerve to turn around and say, we still shouldn't get reparations. And he even went so far as to use examples and said that young Asian and Hispanic Americans who are first generation immigrants are going to say, why should they have to pay when they had nothing to do with that? Some of the most outrageous defenses have come from black, uh, a black president in that instance, 
and your black politicians. They're the ones that's against it. Well, keep in mind, this is the man right now that's getting ready to give us all to ensure that Jim Crow Joe wins again. I want to remind you that not only did he say hell no in that instance, but that during the previous presidential candidate uh, 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 election, many of the Democrat candidates were talking about reparations during their campaigns, which gave our issue. We're the ones that gave it momentum, of course. Mainstream media wasn't making this an issue. Their black talking uh, heads and reporters weren't pushing reparations, we are. So we're so important and so powerful that many of the presidential candidates were talking about reparations. Guess who came in to help shut it down and to give the presidential candidates cover so they wouldn't have to talk about it? James Clyburn, what did he say in this piece? This piece reminds us of what he said, rather. The headline is Congressman James Clyburn challenges reparations despite 2020 presidential candidates being open to the idea. According to The Hill, Clyburn, a South Carolina Democrat who also happens to be the highest ranking African-American congressman at the time this was the case, says he thinks, quote, pure reparations would be impossible to implement and believes that given any sort of tax incentives to developers who work in low-income neighborhoods is just smoke and mirrors. I want to remind some of you, I talked about this almost ad nauseum, and I still don't believe that enough folks have discussed this. What? You all know how the Democrats tell us how racist the Republicans are because they engage in gerrymandering. For those of you that don't know, a simple term for gerrymandering is basically the manipulating the maps of black enclaves so that they can uh, um, dilute our voting impact and so that they can have uh, the benefit uh, of the voting. So they manipulate large black enclaves and sometimes they're not so large, but large enough to where it diminishes the black vote in other words. And they start to play with the maps, right? Well, how many of you all know that so many folks have been suing the Republicans because it's been most of the Republicans that's been making the headlines for doing that, right? Thus messing with black folks' ability to vote. Well, some time back, this media outlet broke the story about James Clyburn involved in gerrymandering. And all of your black talking heads are real quiet. The Democrat Party, who calls out the Republicans and sues them for this, they've been quiet. This headline talks about how Representative James Clyburn protected his district at a cost to black Democrats. The long and short of it, family. He was facing the possibility of an unsafe district. South Carolina's most powerful Democrat sent his aide to consult with the GOP on a redistricting plan that diluted black voting strength and harmed his party's chances of gaining seats in the Congress. It talks about how this meeting was uh, was arranged in secret on November 19th of 2021. The chief of staff for South Carolina's Senate Judiciary Committee texts Dalton Tresvent, a key aide to Representative Jim Clyburn, the state's most powerful Democrat. It goes on to specifically talk about what was in the text. Hey, Dalton, Andy Fivick here. We wrapped up some morning things quicker than we thought. So if you want, can come earlier than 1.30, we're available. It talks about how the state legislator had begun the critical task of redrawing voting districts lines after the 2020 census. Even small changes in the lines can mean the difference between who wins office and who loses and which party holds power. It talks about as the process commenced, Clyburn had a problem. His once majority black district has suffered a, a daunting exodus of residents since the last count. He wanted his seat to be made as safe as possible. Republicans understood the powerful black Democrat could not be ignored, even though he came from the opposing party and no official role in the state level process. Fortunately for them, Clyburn, who was 82 at the time, he's older than that now, was recently reelected to his 16th term, had long ago made peace with the art of bartering. It talks about Tres Vant, that's his aide, high level trusted aide, made his way to the grounds of the antebellum state house of Clyburn's 16th district and presented it to Fivik and the other Republican committee staffers who were working to reconfigure the state's congressional boundaries. Some of Trevant's proposals appealed to the Republicans. The sketch added black voters to Clyburn's district 
district while moving out some predominantly white precincts that lean toward the GOP. But the Republicans kept Trevant's map confidential as they worked through the redistricting process for the following two months. They looped in Trevant again near the end, according to the public records obtained by ProPublica. The resulting map, they say, finalized in January 2022, made Clyburn's lock on power stronger than it might have been otherwise. And House Representatives uh, seat, a House of Representatives seat that Democrats held as recently as 2018 would become even more solid for the incoming Republican. This came at a cost. Democrats now have virtually no shot of winning any congressional seat in South Carolina other than Clyburn's state political leaders on both sides of the aisles say. I wanted you to keep in mind that the man who quietly worked with the quote unquote enemy so that he could secure his seat and mess over his black constituents and possibly future black Congress people. This James Clyburn who said hell no to reparations and then said again at a different time that implementation is impossible. This is the one right now that's working overtime and step down from a position, Democrat position, so that he can give more time to Joe Biden. Do you all understand how this works? These are, these are folks that look like us, but they're not of us. I hope some of you folks that are listening to me now in South Carolina and even in the surrounding areas will give them that everlasting work and hold them accountable. I hope you share this broadcast with your family and friends in the South and throughout the United States to give them reason to hold their vote until they decide to do what we tell them to do when it comes down to reparations. We want to vote. But we got to be smart about our voting. We can't just be voting to make sure that you all give a lot of money and resources and tangibles to Afghans, Ukrainians, hundreds of billions of dollars to the Ukrainians, legal immigrants, illegal immigrants, AAPI community, and of course, members of the dominant society keep benefiting. That's outrageous. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. My name is Vicky Dillard. Be sure to give the broadcast a big, big thumbs up. And beloved, be sure to check out my website at vickyplanet.com for my The Vicky Dillard Mystery School for only $45 a month. It is absolutely uh, life-changing and it's going to give you the benefits in every area of your life of unfair advantage. Again, I can't wait to see you again. <laughs>